Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I wanted to pop up and talk with you a little bit about a conversation that I had recently with someone to whom I'm very close, very, very close. She's a very important person in my life. And this person has issues. You know what I mean? She has, she has all kinds of issues, not the least of which are anxiety, crippling, like debilitating fear. She also has inner narratives. And in specific, she struggles with suicidal thoughts. And not just the errant, you know, every now and again, suicidal thought. We're talking about suicidal thoughts every single day. Every single day, she finds herself thinking about killing herself. And the way that she describes it is really interesting. I was listening to her and, and she, it almost sounds like these thoughts are a comfort to her. Like they soothe her, like there's always the option, like I don't have to stay here, like this place is miserable, or I'm miserable, or I'm so scared, and, but I don't have to stay here. Almost like a fallback position that she can take if she ever needs to. And of course, hearing this, I knew a little bit of this, but I really didn't know the depths of these suicidal thoughts. And so I began asking some questions and I'm gonna stop right here and say that of course I am not a physician, like I'm not a doctor and I do not diagnose people. And I don't like to even talk around things that are medical because that's an area where you've got to take, you've got to take care of yourself and you have to avail yourselves of all avenues that present themselves. And of course, medicine is important. If you have a mental illness, you have to seek help. This is so important. And so I'm not purporting to be in a position where I can tell anybody what to do with a, a legitimate mental illness. But I will say that from a spiritual perspective, an energetic perspective, as I was listening to her, I was actually picking up on her energy. And I was looking at the energy around her, like in her field, and I was seeing these firings of, ener of energy, like these bursts and sparks of misfired, misaligned electrical energy all throughout her field. And, and I think that this is actually her anxiety presenting in the energetic field, which probably in the physical body, which would feel, it would feel like just bursts of tension or anxiety or rushes of fear at any given time and potentially for no reason because the energy itself in the grid is just blocked, misfired, misaligned. So there's a lot of activity happening just in her field. But beyond that, spirit began to show me, well, <laughs> Spirit asked me to talk to her about the difference between the thoughts and what the thoughts tell you and the I am. And of course, I talk about this a great deal and it's important because this is the key to massive liberation. It's the key to sovereignty of living your best life. It's, it's understanding who you truly are, but it's so easy in this incarnation, in this 3D reality to get stuck in the loop of your life, your mundane life, your nine to five, your kids, your house, your mortgage, your bills, and your thoughts. And the thoughts for many of us, most of us, I dare say, the thoughts happen to us. They, it's like they think us and we never observe them. We never pay attention to what they're really saying. Maybe sometimes we do and we say, aha, um, I am telling myself that I'm ugly. I'm telling myself that I'm not lovable. I'm telling myself that I'm going to fail again. I'm telling myself that I could kill myself. And you become aware that you're having this type of a thought. But then you kind of go back into the loop of the reactive life and the thoughts continue to think you and the thoughts continue to animate you because of course thoughts are things and that's what thoughts do. Thoughts create things. Listen to me when I tell you that you are an infinite creator no matter what iteration you find yourself in. And of course, this life here as Crystal Ann Compton in 3D reality here in Texas, that's an iteration of my soul complex, my I am, my over soul. It's just an aspect. It's just an aspect. But even in this aspect, that's so sticky, this world, this vibration here in this incarnation is so sticky. Even here, I am creating my reality. And that creation starts with 
my thoughts because there's an energetic substance to thoughts. They're not just happening in a vacuum. They mean nothing. No, they create something. And when thoughts are married with emotions, when we combine those two things, that's when we signal the universe through the subconscious that it's time to bring a new condition into the life. My thought and my emotion create the transmission that tells the universe to now bring me a new condition. So if my thoughts are suicidal, if my thoughts are defeatist, if my thoughts are negative and I'm also feeling that way about myself, fundamentally, unworthy, unloved, do you see what I'm marrying? Do you see what I'm blending together? Do you see what I'm creating? I'm creating my life and it's out of control because I'm not intentional. I am asleep. I am unconscious. First order of business, I told this friend of mine, is to wake up. You are not your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are the entity, the being that, sta that stands outside of the brain. The brain is just an interface. The mind is fixed to the 3D reality. Consciousness is not contained within the brain or even the mind. Consciousness stands outside of the dimension and indeed out of, outside of all of the dimensions. Consciousness is who you truly are. But see, the brain is doing what we taught the brain to do. And it's doing it automatically. It's doing it in a default position because we trained it to. What am I saying here? Well, for this woman, not unlike myself and probably not unlike a lot of you, she grew up in an invalidating, abusive, traumatic childhood. During those formative years when the brain is fusing together, you know, and the beliefs are forming and the patterns and the platforms being built upon which we're going to live our whole life, in those formative years, we are at the same time being programmed with messages telling us who we are and in particular who we are not and who we never will be. These programs are teaching us what we deserve and what we don't deserve. These programs are often inserted into us by people we call parents and teachers and mentors and advisors and authorities. They teach us these messages and we take them on, we absorb them like sponges. From the age of zero to six, we are literally sponges. It's Science is showing that from zero to six, we are in a trance-like state. We are in a hypnagogic state. All we're doing is just pulsing up. We're absorbing. We're saturating. We're lapping it up. And if mama says I'm pretty, I believe I'm pretty. And if mama says I'm smart, I believe I'm smart. But if mama says I'm dumb, if mama says get out of my sight, if mama says something negative, I'm soaking that up as well. Zero to six is the most profound absorption stage, but that continues on through our childhood, through our teens, and even into our 20s. We're still soaking it up, and we're telling the brain. We're teaching the brain how to think. Well, we're teaching the brain ultimately how to think, but somebody taught us those thoughts in the very beginning, and then we just adopted them. We just believed them and we agreed to them. The second agreement of the four agreements is don't take anything personally. Don't take anything that anybody says about you personally and as important to yourself or your existence because anything that anybody says to you is being filtered through their own crap, through their own experiences, their own pain, their own suffering, their own successes. It's not even about you by the time it hits your ears, so you can't take it personally. And if you have people saying you're not worthy, you're not beautiful, you're not pretty, you shouldn't be here, just kill yourself. People say that in this world. Kids say that to kids, just kill yourself. If you say yes to that, if you agree to that, it changes you. And in specific, it makes you a match for the message. It makes you a match for the message. And so if as children, we're sponging it in and our family or our authority is saying, you're not worth it, you shouldn't be here, you're invisible, what you say doesn't matter, 
We believe it, we say yes to it, and it changes us so that we become a match for it. In every way, it starts showing up in our body, it shows up in our behavior, in our actions, things that we say to others and to ourselves, things that we do, but it also shows up in the mind, in the thoughts. Your mother saying, you're stupid, you're dumb, starts reverberating and echoing in your thoughts, and soon you're thinking, I'm so stupid, oh God, I'm so dumb, I'm gonna fail, I'm always failing, and and soon these are your thoughts implanted there is a seed that was planted not by you but now these thoughts are thinking you and it's a habit the brain is a creature of habit and of routine it likes pathways it likes well-known pathways and if from an early age we have taught it to walk down the same path of unworthiness of ugliness of invisibility, and it's been walking down that path for years now, then it is habituated to it. It now prefers that path. It prefers thinking those thoughts. It defaults to those thoughts. It doesn't occur to the brain first to think, well, wait a minute, I'm not actually ugly, I'm beautiful in my own way. Or wait a minute, I'm actually smart, I've gone to college, I have my degree, and I'm, I'm, I'm an intelligent. It doesn't occur to the brain to think those thoughts. It just occurs to the brain to keep walking the path that it knows, that it has created. These are called neural pathways. And so the question I had my, for my friend was, are you suicidal? Are you suicidal or is your brain just walking the same path? The path that you created when you were in your teens and you were telling yourself, I don't have to be here. I don't want to be here. I could just kill myself. I should just kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. All those thoughts of suicide that you had when the trauma was going down, even though you're not in the trauma anymore, your thoughts, those, those thoughts are still knocking around in your brain. But that's not you. Your thoughts are not you. Your thoughts are a tool that the consciousness uses intentionally to create the life that it wants. But if we are unconscious and the thoughts are just thinking us, then we stay in the loop. We stay in the narrative. We continue walking down the path and we say, I'm suicidal. No, your brain's suicidal. Your thoughts are suicidal. Your thinking is suicidal, but that's not you. That's just a pathway. That's just a commute you take every day. Just like you commute to work and you commute home from work. Boom, 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 boom. Walking the same path, driving the same path. But that's not who you are. How empowering is it, I asked her to know, that it's possible you're actually not suicidal. It's possible that your brain is just in a habit, in a looped, tracked, well-tread, narrative prison because we haven't learned to teach it different yet. We haven't learned to teach it a new path. See, that's all it takes. And it's the consciousness that determines that. It's the consciousness that must finally say, I am not suicidal. I am here in my power, in my sovereignty. I am here a creator. I am here, you are all gods. That's who I am. And my brain must yield to that. You bring the ego and the mind into the submission, into submission to the will of the spirit, the consciousness, the I am of who it is that you are. And I told her, that's who you are. Lightworker, get up off of your knees. Stand up and occupy your divine nature, your God nature. Thank you, God in me. Because there is a God in you. And that God is determining. That God is creating. That God in you loves you. That's who you are. And so if you find yourself caught in the loop of thinking negative thoughts, recognize that that's not you. Recognize that you have control over that. And recognize that just as we trained the brain to think that way and to walk the path, we can also train the brain to walk a new path. We can begin to practice noticing and practice divine observation. We all have the capacity to do this, to pop out of 
the mundane, the pace of the life, and into the position of the observer, which is neutral and doesn't judge, but just looks at the life, the landscape of the life, and says, oh, we should adjust this, and we should do that, and this is what you're doing. It's a recorder and a neutral advisor. We have to be able to develop the facility to pop out and notice what we are thinking. See, my friend notices she's thinking suicidal thoughts, and that's the first part of the formula. The second part of the formula is retraining the brain to think a new thought. I'm noticing I'm telling myself I'm ugly. I'm noticing I'm telling myself I'm unworthy. I'm going to stop that thought. I'm going to erase it and supplant it. I'm going to insert a positive thought about myself or my situation into the space that was formerly occupied by the negative thought. And this is how we retrain the mind. So when we find ourselves saying, I am ugly, we retrain the mind with an affirmation. I am beautiful. I am divine. I am powerful. Every time we notice, we stop and we walk a new path. And soon the brain, which seeks out routine and seeks out habit, will begin to favor the new path. The more you walk it, the more you train yourself, the more the brain responds to it. And soon you'll find you're not thinking those same thoughts anymore. And you'll see, I was never those thoughts. And then you'll see, those thoughts never even originated within me. Somebody else put those thoughts in me. And then you'll start thinking timelines, my friends. Timelines, what am I talking about? I'm talking about going back in the timelines, back to those times, those moments, those messages, and those incidents of programming and rescuing yourself. This is a form of time travel. This is actually a form of psychological and spiritual recovery recovering aspects of yourself and integrating them back into the whole completely intentional completely empowered it's the consciousness that calls back the aspects to itself it's the consciousness that seeks to be whole because that is its natural state and as i spoke this to her i could see her feel it to be true i could see her feel it to be true and see as somebody who talks to people online i've heard a lot well how how do you know that's true? Why should I believe you? And here's what I say. I say, did you feel that? When I stood here and told you that you are the consciousness that stands outside of these looping negative thoughts, that you are a being of divine power, did you feel that anywhere in your physical body? Did you get a goose bump? Did something constrict on the back of your head? Did you feel energy in your body? Did you start to tear up? Did something witness within you a response, an energetic echo that testifies to the truth of that? That's all you need. You don't need a scientific study to tell you who you are. You don't need a parent to tell you who you are. You don't need any of that. You already know who you are. Lightworker, get up off your knees. You are an empowered, divine being. So many people think they're suicidal. No, their brain is suicidal. They are the consciousness that stands outside of it. Learn how to re-identify. Not with the thinking brain, but rather with the I am of who you are, but always with compassion. Because I could see as I was talking to her, about how she, and she was beginning to see, wow, maybe I've let my brain think my reality into being. Maybe I've let my brain run amok. I could see her getting down on herself for having lost time, not being intentional and stuck in reaction. But I told her, wait a minute, correct, create a new path, be intentional, but always love the you that created that first path. Always love the you that taught the brain to think in these ways. That you that was broken by somebody. That you that was abused by somebody. Love that you who, as a defense mechanism, as a way to self-soothe, created a narrative about suicide. Love the being, the you that you were, when you first thought those thoughts. Because love never fails ever. It always wins and succeeds. Don't hate yourself for the time lost. Don't hate yourself for the thoughts that you've thought. Instead, 
love the you at every level. And if you gotta go back in the timeline and you gotta go get her, then we can do that too. The root of all suffering is a fundamental misunderstanding of who it is that you truly are. You are not your job. You are not your bank account. You are not your marriage. You are not your friends or lack thereof. You are not your health, your wellness or lack thereof. You are not the conditions and circumstances of this third dimensional reality, which comes part and parcel with both joy and suffering, but it's not who you are. It's just where you are, see? It's just where you are in an aspect, in a moment. But who you are transcends all of this and is more powerful and is the magician and is the magician of creation, all of it, all of it. Let that be freedom for you. Again, I say, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I don't treat mentally ill people. There are people who are suicidal, that need medicine, that need counsel, all of that. That's, you, you need to do that, avail yourself of all of that. But consider for a moment, consider just for a moment, that all of these thoughts that have been identifying you for so long and thus creating the circumstances and relationships and condition of your life, that these thoughts might not be you and consider the possibility of flipping the script and using these thoughts now as a tool, a tool of creation to create the life that you truly want to live. It's possible, it's freeing, and it's your birthright. It truly is.